Time now for Commodity in Chief. We focus on one leader in the commodity world, and today it's Mike Wirth, CEO of Chevron. And I started by asking him just how much more productivity he expects to get out of the Permian. It's hard to quantify that, Alex, because uh, every year we continue to find improvements in performance and efficiency. And just today we shared with shareholders that our, our average feet drilled per rig will increase 50 percent from 2018 to 2020. So we're getting a 50 percent improvement in productivity out of drilling rigs, which are a pretty well-established technology and something we've been doing for a long time. So costs continue to come down, productivity continues to go up, and uh, every time we think we're reaching a point where we've about found the last idea, there's a new set of these things. So I think there's still some running room to, uh, to get even better in the Permian. Are, are you seeing the same kind of operational issues that some of the smaller and medium-sized guys have, where uh, you parent-child relationships, you kind of frack different areas, you don't mean to, are you having the same kind of issues? No, we're not, because mm -hmm. we've, uh, there was a time when I think people, some, would criticize us that we were going more slowly than mm -hmm. some of the smaller companies. Uh, we were learning a lot because we have uh, partnerships with several companies who are trying things and learning through trial and error. We were lining up uh, a plan to build a machine, our, uh, our development plan, that is returns focused, that's highly efficient. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we never downspaced wells, for instance. Oh. Uh, we understand which benches are in communication with one another, and we develop those simultaneously. So we develop them as a unit, as opposed to coming back and having some of these parent-child problems. And so uh, issues that you've seen widely reported with some other companies, we've largely avoided. Um, do you, your break even is already really low. It's at 49, right? How much more can you realistically think you can lower that? Well, we're going to try to continue to lower it. It's a commodity business. And in a commodity business, costs always matter. Capital discipline always matters. Uh, today, we announced the intent to remove another billion dollars in operating mm -hmm. cost from our business by the end of this year and to find another billion dollars in margin capture across our value chains around the world by the end of 2022. This is without any help from commodity prices or markets. It's all through self-help. So uh, we need to continue to look for ways to use technologies and find ways to be both more efficient and effective across all of our business. Do you want to like 45, 40, or you don't care as long as it keeps going down? You need to, you need <laughs> to keep it down, and it's hard to know where, uh, where the bottom is. But uh, look, in commodity markets, uh, one of the things that you never regret is having a low break even in a low cost structure. Uh, what gives you the confidence that Chevron can generate cash returns in the Permian when uh, the other guys couldn't? Well, we're going to be cash positive this year. So we've been investing several billion dollars a year, three and a half to four billion dollars a year. Production has been growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we outlined uh, the intent to be at 600,000 barrels a day by the end of this year, a million barrels a day by the end of 2024. And we've, we break into uh, positive free cash flow this year and outlined a profile that shows we could produce over a million barrels a day, generate over $4 billion a year in free cash flow after investment out through 2040 and even beyond that. So it's reaching the scale and the productivity now that will spin off considerable free cash flow. Well, I was going to say, is that the scale because you have more good wells that you can develop or you can develop them more quickly? Or did you just do it better and so your decline rate is less? Uh, or you just have the balance sheet to be able to keep deploying capital? Like, what makes you be able to deliver those returns? It's really, it's really we've reached the scale now that with the level of capital in inputs that mm -hmm. we have, which call it in round numbers $4 billion, uh, the operating cash flow exceeds $4 billion. And we, it, flat prices will move towards $8 billion, which is where we spin off the, the additional four for, for many, many years to come. Gotcha. Um, this is also going to be a really bad p and hard time for small and medium-sized companies, uh, for the oil price and for demand, et cetera. What are you going to buy? <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to ask. I and do. I, uh, but typically I, you like to invest in bottom of cycles, right? I mean, what, what, what kind of qualifications? Or nothing at all. Well, that's certainly a, a possibility. We've got the balance sheet to consider a lot of things. Uh, during this part of the cycle. That's a nice thing to have is the financial capacity and flexibility to consider things. But we have uh, such a strong base program mm -hmm. and we've outlined for the next decade a very compelling uh, case for our, our shareholders. If we were to do something, we need to convince ourselves and then convince our shareholders that that something is better than the hand that we hold right now. And so it's a pretty high bar. Fair. There is a narrative that all the good stuff's been drilled. Uh, do you see that in terms of your competitors? No. 
No, the Permian Basin is an enormous area. We just increased our estimate of resource within just our own portfolio. We only hold about 10% of the land in the Permian. Three years ago, we saw 9 billion barrels of resource. Mm -hmm. Today, we updated it to 21 billion barrels of resource. Wow, that's a, that's a jump. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of good acreage to be drilled. And the other thing that we continue to see are improvements in um, the application of development. So I talked about drilling efficiency. And we're working on technologies to improve recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of technology uh, progress still to be made. So there's a long, bright future ahead for the Permian Basin. So U.S. shale's not peaking? U.S. shale will uh, continue to grow well into the future.